I've waited ages to see this, the brand new Carnago V4 RS. And wow, what a bike. So this is a UAE Team Emirates specification. And here we have a frame set in a stunning red colorway. This might be the fastest bike in the world right now. And I'm surrounded by some absolute gems from the Carnago back catalog. Got that MAPE paint job on a C64 over there. Looks glorious. And behind me, an older steel frame with a modern group set. That is an absolute beauty. I would love to ride a bike and see how it performs compared to something modern like this. But in this video, we're gonna focus on this brand new V4 RS. And we'll find out what makes it so fast, go through the details on a brand new bike, put on the scales, give you a free hub sound test, and a lot more. I'm at my local bike shop in Sirencester, Ride 24-7, who have kindly allowed me to share their bike with you today. I'll put a detail down below. So if you wanna see this bike, or these bikes here with your own eyes, well, this is a place to come. Right, I'm David, we're watching Just Ride Bikes. Let's dive in. Before we get into the details of the brand new frame set and what the change of the old V3, let's look at this build, as this is what Tally Pogaccia and his UAE Team Emirates squad will be riding this season, barring a few small detail changes. And the big elephant in the room is the fact the team have moved from Campag to Shimano. I know some people think it's sacrilege to put a Japanese group set on an Italian frame, but I don't really buy into that personally. And we have the latest 12-speed Durace Di2 semi-wire group set with hydraulic disc brakes. The one detailed change that Ride 24-7 have made is a ceramic speed oversized pulley cage. I don't think the team are running that, but a bit of bling on their bike for sure. So the group set is a big change from last season for the team, and so are the wheels. They are using NV wheels, and they see the US company return to the Pro Peloton after a few years of absence. These are the SES 4.5s, front and rear, hookless, tubeless only, and the team are using Continental GP5000 STR tires. You might notice if you've got BDIs, these aren't those tires. These are for display purposes only until we get the actual tires to make this a ride ready bike. The team are also using the MV handlebar and stem, which we don't have on this bike. We have the company's own CC01 one piece carbon handlebar and stem, the same as on my C68 at home. So the V4 RS has been on quite a journey since the original V1 came out back in 2014. And quite a public journey last year as before the frame was uh, finalized, they actually put through a season long testing program under the name Prototipo, Italian for prototype. And apparently they had five different versions of the frame with different carbon layouts to test the stiffness, the different aspects of the frame, head tube, bottom bracket, and so on. And gave these five frames to a team and got their feedback. And then the one they rubber stamped is the one we have now in production and in my very hands right here. So in many ways, it looks very similar to the V3 that came before it, but lots of subtle changes to really improve the aero performance. So when the original V1 launched all the years ago, it was an attempt to make a lightweight aero bike or a semi-aero bike. The sort of bike that's very popular now with the likes of the Tarmac SL7 as a good example. Back then they had the C64 and they had the concept aero bike, which is no longer available. So they put all their aero and knowledge and expertise into the V platform. It's also a monocoque frame made in the Far East where the C68 is still made in Italy by hand. So where the C68 has a tube and lug construction, this has a monocoque construction, much more akin to how most carbon frames are made in the world that we will ride these days. And in the aero department, well, we have to take their data at a face value. They do say the new V4 RS is about 17 and a half watts less drag than the old V3 at speeds of about 50K an hour. As yet, I haven't seen any independent wind tunnel testing. I'd love to put this in a wind tunnel and compare it to the C68 and maybe a Tarmac SL7, perhaps a new Super 6 Evo to see how it really compares. And then they focus on the stiffness and they develop their own testing protocol to really examine the way a frame flexes when a rider is sprinting. 
And if you watch Tally Pogaccio ride, he likes to attack, likes to sprint and go full gas. So when he's attacking and sprinting in a frame, it's gonna flex, give him all that power transfer he needs and wants. Right, time to put the bike on the scales and see what it weighs. So no pedals, no bolt cages. Here we go. I'm zooming in for you. Now that isn't as light as I was expecting or hoping. You might remember I rode the V3 RS Tour de France edition with a Campag group set last year or year before. And that from memory was 7.1 kilos. So it's not super light. And I've just ridden a Candel Super 6 Evo. That was lighter. Giant Propel, that's 6.9 kilos. And Tarmac SL7 is lighter as well. But remember, weight isn't everything. And it's clearly not holding back Tally Pagatcha. So let me know what you think of that weight down below. While the V4 RS is stunning, it's nice to look back at where Carnago were some 20 years ago. And this is a master produced in 2007 for a single year because it had a steel frame with a carbon rear end. So it wasn't well received at all and therefore only lasted one year of production. Never seen one in the flesh before. I think it looks amazing. Look at the detail on the lugs, simply stunning carbon fork, amazing paint job, the Olympic rainbow bands down there and up there as well, and the carbon fiber rear triangle. So the early 2000s was an interesting year for bikes. Carbon was really arriving and taking over from steel frames and aluminum and magnesium, which had brief uh, moments in the spotlight, but really a big transition. So I guess this was an attempt to meld their stunning iconic steel frames with the benefits of carbon fiber, low weight, stiffness, and so on. And a very nice build here, a build you'd expect on a frame like this. So Campag, record, 11 speed, carbon fiber everywhere, rim brakes, Campag wheels as well, and a nice modern saddle. So a bike, probably you wouldn't ride that often or every day, but a nice summer Sunday cafe ride bike for sure. I love to ride this bike, but it's a customer's bike, so not for sale, and definitely not a bike I can ride, but I thought I'd share it with you because it is a stunning bike and a nice contrast to where we are with the brand new V4 RS. And this here is a C64. The model launched in 2018, I think it was, and a successor to the C60 that came before it. To retain the same tube and lug construction, very similar appearance as well, but it was a lot lighter. I think about 200 grams lighter than the frame that came before it, available with rim, and as we have here, disc brakes as well. It was also the first time that the Italian company went to internal cable routing with their own new handlebar and stem. So a big step forward, a big attempt to make it a more modern frame whilst retaining that sort of heritage from the frame construction. And when we talk about group sets on a Carnago frame and whether it should be Italian or Japanese, this stunning MAPE colorway is a good reminder of the success that the company had back in the 90s when the C40 was a groundbreaking and race proven frame. It won multiple editions of Paru Bay, tough enough to survive the hell of the North. And those frames were equipped, of course, with Shimano dual race group sets. So Conargo enjoyed most of its success in the modern era with Japanese group sets, even though this bike, as you can see, is built up with a lovely Campag Super Record EPS group set with all this glorious carbon fiber. Looks really bling, doesn't it? So, Conargo with Shimano or Campag, let me know your preference down below. And lastly, let's see what the free hub sounds like, shall we? I know you guys like this. Pretty loud, I think they hear you coming. Almost there. Just hit run out for a second. Right, that do. Okay, 
Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you want to see my review on a C68, which is essentially the sister bike to the V4 RS, if this is an F1 race car, the C68 is more of a grand tourer, and you watch that video right up here, and subscribe to the channel by hitting the button down here. Got any questions, feel free to put them down below. And a big shout out to Ride247 for letting me share the bike with you today and their details down below if you want to see the bike with your own eyes if you're in the Cotswold area. And it's definitely worth checking out a stunning bike. Anyway, I'll see you again next time. Thank you so much for watching.